said, and radio is your toy. <laughs> and I, my, I responded, you're absolutely right. I never wanted a job where I had to work for a living. And I've got a feeling as I've heard you share your stories that you feel and have the same passion, or at least have had the same passion for radio that many of us uh, share today. So once again, I welcome you. And I want to give a very special thanks to Mr. Steve Krampus, 89 graduate and uh, dedicated. <laughs> He is the unofficial, the unofficial historian of, of Olivet Radio and has put this uh, program together and has done all the research and, and pulled all the, the bits of information together and has made this all possible. So we want to thank Steve for all he's done and uh, he'll be uh, officiating and being our master of ceremonies here this afternoon. So, Steve? Thanks, Bill. We'll hear more from Bill in just a little bit. Uh, he's going to have more to tell us about uh, the WNU of today. Some of you know the WNU of yesterday, the WKOC of yesterday, WONC of yesterday. So they'll kind of put pieces together for the, the new view of what some of you have already seen up there. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, go up there and take a look around, we'll have it back open for you again real briefly after the uh, little program here. So uh, in case you didn't have a chance to look around, you can still do that. And of course, we got some more food for you to eat up too. So don't want that to go to waste. Uh, one of my favorite uh, fellows that I watched on TV for a while, he had uh, experience in broadcasting on radio before he went to TV. I want you to read you something he wrote about radio. I seldom talk about my job. We all have occupations. Some insist that theirs are best, and often dissertations arise in sessions round the hearth about each job's reward. But that I never trade with them. I'm never in accord. Doctors, lawyers, merchant men, you're noble sirs, it's true. But those of us in radio, we wouldn't change with you. For in this game, with all of its faults, there's one thing I declare. That said to us, we love to hear, I've heard you on the air. It has its heartaches, ups and downs, like all the rest, I guess, but we still argue long and loud. We love it, nonetheless. For when some person, strange of face, we chance to meet, beware. We've made a friend, if he should say, I've heard you on the air. Most of us are versatile. We've done shows of all descriptions, religious, comedy, dramatic ones. We've introduced transcriptions. We sometimes send out photographs. Listeners ask the color of our hair. But best of all, we like to hear, I've heard you on the air. That phrase, so sweet, has out effect. How men in our profession, our faces light with broad smiles, which replace all depression. With shoulders back and chest thrown out and thoughts now free from care, we bless the souls that say to us, I've heard you on the air. Well, vanity, we know you well. We've tasted of your cup. We don't go around admitting it. But we still like to eat it up when some admiring listener brightens up a day so bare by dropping those six words to wit, I've heard you on the air. And although on heaven's streets I have little right to look, I'm sure somewhere St. Peter has my name down in his book. And while I'm waiting, standing there waiting, is my destiny him to declare. I wonder if he'll say to me, I've heard you. <laughs> that kind of puts together both the, the funness of radio along with the, what the ministry of WONU has been about through all of the years. All the 30 years of what now is known as WONU and uh, the five years of WONC back in the 40s. Uh, we've been here for God's glory all through the years. And he has certainly, certainly blessed us down through the years. And uh, one of the main people that uh, he has blessed this station with is with us for today. He's going to talk to us just a little bit. Uh, Dr. Ray Moore is here. He was part of the uh, Olivet Nazarene College, as it was known then, back in the uh, class of 1941, I understand, when you were first with uh, Olivet. And uh, if you recall, you'll tell us a little about this, how he was uh, called upon for the fun task of starting what was then known as WKOC back in the 60s. Now, let Ray talk a little bit now. Call it right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed but as, he, as, as he was reading, he didn't pronounce T-H-E as the any place where it should have been the. <laughs> you know, you say the dog, the man, but the apple, the egg, the orange. And my students have heard that many, many times when they were learning how to, learning how to read script. Well, uh, when I came to Olivet for the second time, I taught here back in the 40s and uh, finished in the 40s and then taught here for a while and uh, I was gone for 20 some years and uh, when Dr. Reed asked me to come back and he and uh, 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 Kurt Brady who was the uh, head of the 
uh, fine arts department at the time, when I finally agreed to come, and then they said, uh, one thing we want you to do is to start a, a broadcast station on campus. Well, I had started one at Kansas City at the seminary, so they knew I knew something about it. Well, okay, it's a kind of a, a pretty big job. So my first assignment was to start in on that application, and I noticed that on your, on your mission statement out there, you're, you talk about the, F the, public, uh, the, the public good as part of your mission, and the FCC is what controls and uh, believe me, they do. So when I started into, even on that small station back there, and I put that application together, everything in triplicate, except the antenna, which is in quadruplicate, because the copy has to go to the FAA, the Federal Aviation Authority. And uh, so when I got that all put together, now for us, it doesn't matter whether you're going to make 50,000 watts or 10 watts. They left to know a lot of stuff about you. The, the uh, charter of the college, the financial statement, the board of trustees, everything under the sun is in that. And when I took that thing to the post office, it weighed two pounds. Now, <laughs> <laughs> imagine what two pounds of paper is like. That's what we put together to get that station going. And it was, I think of uh, a few things that were funny, a few things that, uh, well, I heard you on the air type of things that really make your heart warm. Uh, I remember the first time we were going to broadcast a, a, a football game. We didn't have our own field yet. Bonnie, when I see Bonnie Green and uh, Ken Ball, they lived through a lot of these things with us. And I saw Tim Mercer was here earlier. Is Tim here? He was upstairs. He was, he was with one of our engineers. Anyway, uh, we were going to do this football game from, uh, and since we didn't have our own field, we had borrowed the Catholics, was it Bishop McNamara? Uh, we borrowed their football field. We're going to have a night, a night game, Saturday night. I ordered the ordered the line in for the for the for the remote. We get over there well ahead of time, ready to hook up the remote. No line, nothing marked WKOC as we were known in those days. I got on the phone with the telephone company. I got for Saturday night. Who knows anything? Uh, <laughs> I finally got a hold of somebody. I said, we're supposed to do a ball game out here and we don't, can't find any kind of a line. Well, we put one in. Well, it's, it's not marked. We can't find any kind of a line. We tried every line that was there and they marked for other things. No, not at all. It happened that on the following Monday that the Bell Telephone Company had a luncheon for broadcasters to which I had been invited. And evidently this uh, gentleman who was there as the head of the local Bell Telephone System knew about the problem. He said, I saw, he saw my name and my call sign on my little tag. He said, I need to talk to you. So while we stepped aside, he said, uh, they tell me you had a problem Saturday night. Yes, we did. We, didn't, we couldn't find a line in place. He said, I took that man out this morning that was supposed to install that line. I said, you show me exactly where you put that line. He took me to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> pretty long, pretty long court. To get <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's, that's what happened. Getting College Church uh, on the air. In my sophomore year, I went to Dr. Don Irwin, said that I had no money, but that I needed programming. I needed an audience, and to get an audience, we needed programming. Programming people could not get anywhere else. And so we uh, worked out uh, an arrangement for us to broadcast a college church and Dr. Irwin was uh, very generous with us and helped us financially with the telephone lines and in other ways. I think that was an important part of the stations connecting with its community. Lost my ad -libs. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from the high country of Colorado. <coughs> Bev and I are happy to be part of this 30-year reunion. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, it doesn't seem possible that over eight years have passed since we loaded that truck and headed west. Uh, these retirement years have been good ones for us. I tell people I'm permanently unemployed and enjoying it. We build a home one and a half miles in the sky, just a little this side of the Great Divide. 8,200 feet. We're uh, one and a half miles from the Arkansas River. Wonderful whitewater rafting. We're uh, 30 minutes from powder snow on Monarch Ski Area. The Colorado Hiking Trail is close. I sound like uh, 
the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> well, come and leave your green stuff. We uh, do water aerobics twice a week at the Mount Princeton Hot Springs Pool, and we've, we've done water aerobics with snow coming down on our heads, but it's always nice and warm. And uh, we've helped start the High Country Church of the Nazarene in Buena Vista, Colorado. Some people uh, call it Buena Vista, but we call it Buena. <laughs> and uh, we teach an adult Sunday school class. And uh, I'll tell you how desperate we are. I play the keyboards for the church services. And uh, I've started a new lady singing group. We call it the Valley Voices. Uh, and that's an all-encompassing term because if you have two, you can still call it the Valley Voices. If there are men in the group, you can still call it the Valley Voices. See, it's very personal. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to happen. Uh, I couldn't find too many men that could read music, so I'm, I'm starting with uh, the uh, ladies. Uh, KBRH Salida is the local radio station in the Arkansas Valley. I still can't help grading voices and uh, sound. Uh, the whole crew could use a little training and all of that. <laughs> One of the first things I did when we decided to come back for this reunion was to go through 10 years of the Aurora because I wanted to make sure I could remember all the students. And it was very embarrassing at General Assembly when uh, someone would come up and say, Hi, Prof! And I couldn't remember that. You know, so I'm glad you're all wearing uh, name tags. But uh, when I went through the, those auroras, it was literally a who's who of uh, radio station personnel. I'm hoping I'll be able to chat with more of you at, at the end of the program today. It's been a real blessing to me to, to chat with uh, some of you already. I want to know how things are going with you, uh, what you're doing now, what your kids' names are, uh, where you work, and uh, does your husband work, or do you do all of the work? I'm not going to mention any specific names because I miss somebody. I know I would. Uh, when uh, we left here, uh, I think the last note I made in our correspondence to our listeners was that uh, I felt like we were uh, passing the baton. There were athletes in a race. I felt that way when uh, Ray Moore went to an another assignment. Uh, I felt that way when uh, Henry Smith assumed leadership. Uh, the times were right for certain things to happen, and uh, they did. I watched with pride the tremendous strength the station has in the Chicagoland area. Only the Lord knows the future impact of WONU. I've looked forward to hearing some of the highlights of station events down through the years. I'm glad to hear uh, Ray's comments and uh, Russ Bredholz, and I'm looking forward to uh, Bill DeWeese's comments about what's happening now. Uh, I thought it might be interesting if uh, I gave some of the highlights of the 80s. Now, I have to keep this short. I couldn't think of any humorous things that ever happened during the 80s, so this is going to be fairly serious. Uh, I remember the 10-watt signal uh, in those early years. The uh, educational radio facility 10-watt stations were called sandboxes by our critics. Uh, but uh, I remember when I first came, I got in the car and I drove out toward Herser one afternoon to check our vast listening area. Uh, it faded out before I got to Herser. But uh, I wasn't uh, at all uh, depressed by it. I, I was elated. I thought, man, alive, we're getting out almost to Herser. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. At about the turn of the decade, the government told all the ten waters, you're going to have to uh, increase your power or somebody else is going to take over the station and uh, you're, you're going to be out of luck. 
Uh, we presented the problem to Dr. Parrott, and uh, he agreed we should try for increased power. The result was a move to a new frequency, an increase in power to 430 watts, and a stereo signal. Now, as I toured the area, I was very pleased to get the station almost to Coal City. <laughs> we're, we're really expanding. Uh, with the enhancement of the signal came a move to uh, the library, and we were certainly proud of the new studios uh, on the top of the banner. It's amazing how much furniture we uh, gathered from the basement of Miller. Uh, have you ever been down there? Oh, it's a gold mine of... Uh, used <coughs> furniture, desks, and so forth. And so the, the station was uh, using all of this equipment. It looked pretty good to us. It was better than peach crates by <laughs> pull off. The next step of improvement for uh, the station was also, I think, one of its more painful steps, as I think back on in history, with the increase of power to 35,000 watts and the building of the uh, 400 and 30-foot tower uh, came much static. We were feeding our signal into TV sets all over the area, and uh, the criticism was enough to keep us all very humble, let me tell you. While we were okay as far as the FCC was concerned, uh, we felt it was important to show the community a Christian response, and we provided filters to eliminate the signal going into the TV sets in the area, and the community response affirmed the rightness of our action. During the middle to late 80s, we also saw the beginning of operator scholarships, the AM Inner Campus Training Station, uh, and radio charathons. Wow, <laughs> that first charathon, $2,000! <laughs> <laughs> Time won't permit uh, any further memories, and uh, I've got to hit the network in 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you all to know my debt of gratitude to uh, committed and capable student leaders, to my immediate supervisor, Dr. David Kale, to a talented chief engineer, Dennis Baldridge, to wise leaders, Dr. Willis Snowbarger and his successor, Dr. Ivor Newsham to an enthusiastic administrative team, and to Dr. Leslie Parrott, who supported the station in ways that uh, many people will never know. And so it's on to WONU's future. May God continue to bless this important ministry and the people he's using to make it happen. Thanks, Steve, mm -hmm. for allowing me to ramble a bit this afternoon. <laughs> other people. And in this race, I only ran a 100-yard dash. Uh, I came in the summer of 1988, uh, following Don Tolan. Uh, no one could have prepared my way more thoroughly than he did, from inviting me to his home to stay, uh, to helping in every way that he could. And um, I was only here for a short period of time as the director of, of the radio station. Uh, after a couple years, I knew I was going to stay on at Olivet, but at a different capacity. So. Uh, as I look back at the things that happened during 1988 to 1992, uh, the things that I remember, number one, were the changing of a call sign. Uh, when I accepted the position to come here, I was at Mount Vernon Nazarene College, and I'd asked the administration here, why aren't you W, O, and U? And the answer was, someone else has that. Well, I had a, uh, a directory in my office, and I tried my best to find who on earth had W, O, and U, and I couldn't find anyone. So I called the FCC, and some lady there in the archive said, well, hold on a minute, sir, I'll try to find out. Came back and said, oh, it's a Navy ship um, out of Newark uh, here. <laughs> and I said, well, what on earth are they doing with WONU? That would be perfect for our college. And uh, she said, well, uh, they have it from time to time, just arbitrarily assigned. And I said, I sure wish they didn't have it and we had it. She said, well, if you write them a letter, they don't really care, you probably could get it. So in March, uh, before I came, uh, I contacted administration here and we submitted a letter. And in August, uh, we were able to go to WONU. <coughs> the words of the poem that Steve uh, spoke uh, at the beginning of the meeting still, they keep ringing around my head and they remind me actually of my, my very first day on the air. 
here. Uh, I came in as operations manager. Dr. Smith was director of broadcasting. And about two weeks after I began my duties, I, I hosted, uh, began the morning show, along with two students uh, who are both here, Carl Fletcher and Julie Lambert. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I've been doing radio for quite a while, but I was, I was petrified that morning. It was a new radio station, new responsibilities, a new audience, and it's kind of like having to prove yourself all over again and, and to start from scratch. And I'm not sure how long we had been on the air that morning, but the uh, studio phone rang, and I picked it up, and there was a young lady's voice on the phone, and she said, are you the same Bill DeWeese that was on WTLT in Columbus, Ohio? And I said, yes, <laughs> one of the same. And she said, you know, I just moved, I'm a student at Moody Bible Institute, and I'm going to school, I just moved here from Columbus, and I never thought I would hear your voice again. <laughs> And uh, it's amazing how much those words just kind of beef up your e ego just enough to know that it's okay, it's going to be all right. I would never admit that outside these four walls. <laughs> <laughs> where I'm coming from. Well, as far as where we're at today, I guess the two big things that people ask about, they always want to know, is what's happening financially, because as you've heard the history of that, just to uh, express to the Lord uh, how grateful we are for His hand being with this ministry over 30 years. So we stand? Back in the 40s, when we started the radios, in a sense, it's not fair. On the fourth, <laughs> fourth floor of Burke, we couldn't afford to buy perforated wall tile, you know, all those things, soundproofing. So we got a sheet of four by eight plywood and drilled the holes through the plywood. <laughs> And then put the Celotex on the 4x8, that was our model, and went through that wood to make the holes, the perforation in the Celotex. And I spent days and days <laughs> boring holes <laughs> to help us get that first room started from the very beginning. Let's pray. Dear Father, we've heard so many good things today, past and now present, and boggles our mind even what's ahead for the future for Olivet and for the radio and for sharing the message around the world. Good news. Good music. Thank you for the many who are here and the many who are serving elsewhere today who have been here and a part of all this. Give wisdom to Bill and his staff. Help each of us to serve thee well. Your name, we pray. Amen. Well, I don't know if we down here up there. Uh, but I didn't see where we were so okay. How many seconds you want, Don? Oh, this going to be audio, Jim? This is going to be audio and video. Speak to us, gentlemen. Words of wisdom from the directors of broadcasting and Steve. I was mixed in here. Internet, build Q and TSL at every possible moment.